This video is going to be a discussion about heat and belt tuck. So, what we want to start with is going to be movement. So every mech is going to accumulate heat when it moves. You have walking, running, and jumping. Now if you remember to the modifiers for the attacker, walking accumulates 1, running 2, jumping 3. So it's very similar with heat. When you walk, you gain 1 heat. When you run, you gain 2 heat. When you jump, you gain 3 heat minimum. Now jumping works in that you gain 1 heat per hex, 3 minimum. So if you jump 2 hexes, you get 3 heat. You jump 3 hexes, 3 heat. You jump 4 hexes, 4 heat. You jump 5 hexes, 5 heat. Light mechs like the spider can jump up to 9 hexes and they will gain 9 heat from that jump. So that all happens during the movement phase. Moving phase is right before shooting phase. So next when you get to shooting phase, you see what weapons you have, how you want to use them. So this mech is the Atlas AS7K. This is the Karita variant. It's using older tech with single heat sinks. 20 single heat sinks dissipate 20 heat. Now you'll look at its weapons loadout. This, we this mech is more for a sniper role. You'll see the ranges on, all, on the larger weapons are all going to be a short range of 7, medium range of 15 and 14, and then long ranges of 19, 21, and 22. So looking at the heat alone, you'll see the two year large lasers, they make up 24 heat by themselves. So even if you just walk and fire those two weapons, you're already going 5 heat over and suffering a minus 1 to your movement points the next turn. So this is why you would want to use this mech for a sniper roll. Keep it back. So if you fired all of the weapons, you're going to accumulate a total heat of 40. And that's including the anti-missile system. And that'll send you way over. You'll be looking at at least two shutdown rolls. So you just gotta be careful with how you use the mech. Now if you fire one large laser, the LRM-20 and the Gauss rifle, you would be just under heat. So it's, you know, you just have to see what you wanna use in the situation you're in. Now you got those two rear-facing medium pulse lasers. Those are gonna be good for those light fast mechs that are gonna try to cut through the back armor. Now those are gonna accumulate eight heat, so let's say the mech ran, and then use both those weapons. That's already 10 heat. You fire a large laser, you're already going over. So you just have to be careful with what you're shooting. Finally, one of the last ways you'll gain heat is taking a fusion engine hit. With a fusion engine hit, your fusion engine is going to be getting its shielding cracked. So your mech is going to now have heat bleeding out into it. Each fusion engine hit deals an extra 5 heat per turn. So if you run, and have a fusion engine hit, you're already up to seven heat. So 13 heat, and then you're gonna start going over heat on this mech. The thick armor will protect you for the most part, but it's just something to be aware of that this mech can heat up very quickly. So a sniper roll may be preferable for this specific mech. This is the Battlemaster. This is the Battlemaster model BLR-10S. This is one of my favorite mechs. I'll point straight out that it's due to the center torso. If you look at the gear, it has a compact fusion engine and a heavy duty gyro. So it takes three hits to either one to put this mech down. So let's look at the weapons. You'll see on this mech, it has a lot of short range weapons and one long range weapon. Now what this mech is good for is choosing between one or the other. Now you can snipe with the PPC or you can get close to medium range of the medium lasers. So you, you can shoot all the medium lasers or the PPC. The way the heat works out, it has 20 double heat sinks. So whereas the Atlas only had 20 singles, this one has 20 doubles. And by double, it means it can dissipate 40 heat. Now, if you look at the weapons, it can accumulate a total of 50 heat. If you fire all six ER medium lasers, you're already at 30 heat plus two for running, so you're 32, so you only have room for eight more heat before you start going over. So if you're trying to use both the PPC and the medium lasers, you're gonna have to be careful with your numbers, so that way you don't just throw this thing way over heat and start overheating and slowing down. It already has a really slow movement with a 3.5, just like the Atlas. Now, there are a lot of mechs like this. You have a long range bracket, 
A couple weapons that may be long range, a couple weapons that are going to be short to medium range. It so they can cover everything. But you do run the risk of overheating. I personally like to look for mechs that have regular fusion engines, compact fusion engines, and heavy duty gyros, or regular gyros. Because what that does is it allows the center torso to be more compact. So when you look at the Atlas that had the XL engine, there was a lot of slots that could be hit for the engine. This mech only has three engine slots. It has four heavy duty gyro slots. So out of the 12 center torso locations, five of them are committed towards double heat sinks and ECM suites. So you have a very good chance that you could lose your double heat sink or Guardian ECM if this thing starts taking internal damage. I've used this mech before against this other assault mechs and even taking two or three mechs worth of fire, this thing lasted an incredibly long time just because even after one heavy duty gyro hit, that isn't, that isn't too severe. It's the second hit that really, really starts putting the hurt on you. And in three compact fusion engine hits, that's going to take a while to get all three of those slots filled out. Now looking at the double heat sinks themselves, now the way that works is when the double heat sink gets hit, you're gonna take two you're gonna take that two points of heat. So say say I went over on this mech by four heat. In the return fire, I lose a heat sink. That's automatically gonna jump it up to six heat. So on my next movement phase, I'm gonna have to deal with the minus one movement points. Now there's the heat phase isn't supposed to happen until after the physical phase, but it's going to be very rare that your physical weapons are going to take out heat sinks. It rarely happens in any of our games. So we mostly just cram the heat phase into this one, so you just do your heat exchanges. And if for whatever reason you do lose a heat sink or take an engine hit, you can easily just add that heat on during the physical phase. Because whatever heat you may accumulate in the shooting phase, isn't going to affect the physical phase at all. Now, there there is going to be an exception here and there to physical uh, weapons and their heat. For example, is the vibro vibro blade. I haven't used it personally. I haven't seen anyone use it. But that weapon does accumulate heat, so that will add into your heat. But once again, because the heat really won't affect your physical attacks. Just doing the shooting heat in the shooting phase, as well as, you know, if you lose a fusion engine location or a double heat sink, it's, it's just fine to do it in the shooting phase. And then in the physical phase, whatever heat happens, just do it then. This is going to be the final mech I'm going to talk about. This is the Lament. It's a newer mech from the Dark Age, and it's very, very cool. If you look at the weapons, it has two heavy PPCs and three ER medium lasers. It can accumulate a total of 45 heat just from the weapons alone. Now, if he runs two, it's going to be 47 heat. So, if you look down at the heat sinks, you'll see 15 double heat sinks, 30 heat dissipation. So, if you fire all the weapons, then you're going to start going over a lot. This, this mech is going to be a short to medium range mech. It, it gets kind of medium long, but it's not going to be a sniper mech. So you could do it, separate the weapons like the Battle Master, where it has a sniper weapon and then a bunch of up close stuff. This one, you can fire the three medium lasers at short range, maybe add in a heavy PPC with it. Or you could just fire, at the, fire the heavy PPC at medium, medium long range. This mech it has an advanced equipment on it called the Radical Heatsink System. Now this heat, this heatsink system allows each heatsink to dissipate one more heat. So we have 15 double heatsinks dissipating 30 heat. One more heat to each of those heatsinks is going to be 15 more. So 45 heat can be dissipated. So you're right there able to dissipate all of the heat. The only re leftover heat is going to be the walking or running heat you may accumulate. So if you activate your radical heat sink system, fire all the weapons, and run, you're only going to be two heat over. Now the radical heat sink system has a similar roll system as Mask does. 
For a mask, you start off, you have the first roll is going to be a three, the second roll without letting it cool off is going to be a five, third roll is seven, and so on and so forth. Heat sink system, same idea. You roll three, five, seven, so on and so forth. And what's nice is this heat sink system doesn't really cause huge detrimental effects so, like other systems do. If you break it, you're only going to wind up gaining another heat for moving, another heat for shooting. It's it's not really that severe. So it's a very, very good system. Really good pros, not so bad cons. Now what comes with a whole bunch of firepower will typically be a little bit of fragility in the torso location's internals. You look, you can see the XL Fusion Engine and XL Gyro. That's a lot of possible hits to the internals. Now, while this mech does have a significant amount of armor, it's still pretty fragile. You start taking criticals in there, you can die pretty quick. I usually like to play the safe side. As I mentioned before, I like to keep the heat between 4 and 7, so that way I can keep the mech moving really fast. At a 5-8 movement, this thing, if it runs, it only makes one turn, you're at a 3 defensive modifier. That's a really good modifier for a heavy mech, especially if you're trying to return fire with some powerful weapons like that. You can either sling both heavy PPCs and run for 32 heat, putting you just two over. You can fire all the medium lasers and one heavy PPC. Or if you're just at long range and the next turn you might engage someone, fire one heavy PPC and then charge in there and you can fire both of them the next turn. You just really got to look at it. I usually find myself with this mech adding two heat per turn just in the way I cycle the weapons. So with knowing that, I can really gauge where the mech's going to be at and what I want to do, who I want to fight, where I want to go. So this mech I'm really familiar with and how to use. I use it in a lot of games. So this has really just been a discussion on what you can do with some mechs, what you can't do with um, other mechs. You know, you don't want to fire everything and overheat right next to a bunch of small mechs. You know, there's, it, it really varies just depending on what mech is going to be good for what role. This thing's going to be an up close brawler, short to medium bracket, the Battlemaster. It's got a sniper weapon and lots of force to be used in the short and medium ranges. And the Atlas, it's a great sniper. It can overheat for sniping, but even if you go into short range, while you can't use all of the weapons, it's still got very powerful weapons you can use. It really just depends on how you want to use the mech and knowing how the heat scale is going to work. So you don't overheat the mech and start shutting it down at a critical moment. So that's, uh, that's why I have to say about heat. I'll see you in the next video.